How are we today? Not seen yet for a very, very long time. Another bright and sunny day here in Cheshire, down at the simplydag.net community hub. And um, we're going to do a short live video today on using your multimeter to measure current. So what, what multimeter to use, how to use it, how to set it up, how to test it. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Let's just make sure the chat's working okay. There we go, live chat. Live chat's now enabled. So no swearing, no links, please. <laughs> All right. So we take you over to... Um, Take you over to the vehicle. And we've got, uh, obviously, we've got the um, the pickle tools. Hey up, Adam. Hey up, Dan. We've got the pickle tools uh, Volvo, um, kindly donated by Pickle Tools. So this is one of the training assets we've got down here at the community hub for you. So we've got that set up. Obviously, we've got the the live Zoom going as well. So this is going out live on the simplydag.net member Zoom. So yeah. All nicely set up, raring to go. And then what we've got is, obviously Volvo, um, we're gonna show you how to test your meter, which which meter to use, whether we're gonna use the Fleur, the one that's available on my Amazon store. AOP in, a nice little uh, good value for money meter with a Bluetooth app, or one of the, you know, one of the snap-on ones off the snap-on van. Well, you know, how do we use it? What do we use it for? What's the best way to set it up? So, hey up, Mike, how are you? So we'll just get the get the stand. I forgot the stand. Come with me, stand. Oh, actually, no, young young Jack, Jack, come here, mate. <clears throat> you could you can be my you can be my stand. Yeah. Yep. You can, Are you any good at filming? Have you ever done film done filming? You can try. Can't I? You can try. So, do you mind being on film? Right, so this is young Jack. Jack's currently at um, at school, and he's on a two two. He's doing two weeks work experience with me down here at the community hub. Um, been absolutely smashing it out of the park with our virtual academy. Scored ninety seven percent this morning on his uh, electrical skills course. Really, really chuffed with him. So Jack's going to be the cameraman. No pressure, Jack. Adam says. <laughs> All right. So all you got to do is make sure that you don't put your finger over the camera. Right, so first thing we're going to do is multimeter basic setup. So we've got our, our normal our normal multimeter. You see the leads are a little bit different. All these are is a set of test leads that we get got from one of our partners, uh, Warwick Test Supplies. So it's just literally it's just um, a set of leads going together in one lac on the Snap-on Modis and stuff like that. These are the test drive leads. Let's just unravel it. So you can see it goes two into one, back into two then, and, and lot, lots, of, lots of good length. So unlike, unlike the snap-on leads, we've got a good stretch between the terminals. So, so we're going to put this in. The first thing we need to do is test our multimeter, okay, to make sure that um, the internal fuses haven't blown for the amps ranges. You'll notice that mine's got a little addition there. Mine's got a little fuse, an extra fuse on there because this is used um, for, uh, for training. So rather than blow a five pound fuse that's inside the meter, we'll blow a, a 20 pence fuse that's external to the meter. So first thing we want to do, we want to put our leads on. So black to common, and for me in this case, yellow to red to, to the power. And I just want to check that it's actually capable of, of, of measuring anything so the battery's okay. So we'll put it on voltage to start off with. Okay, um, if you can concentrate on that, Jack. And then what I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is put um, red and a black crocodile clip on, dolphin clip, whatever you want to call it. And all I'm going to do is stick that straight on the battery, so follow the leads, Jack. Positive first. Negative seconds, and have we got a voltage reading? So our battery is reading 12.38 volts. So we've got a reasonably well charged battery. Um, if you're measuring battery drain and stuff like that, really you want your battery fully charged before you start your testing. So our meter works, okay? Good to know. Disconnect the disconnect the them off there. Turn my meter off, 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the, what would normally be the red lead. I'm going to take it out of the, vo out of the voltage slot. I'm going to put it over into amps. Okay. Now it's very important when your lead's in this position that you do not try and measure voltage. If you do, you will let the smoke out of the fuse on the meter. Okay, so if it's in amps, the only place it can go is round onto amps. That's the only safe place to put it. Okay. After that, now we want to check that the fuse is intact inside the meter. So, so between there, so the power will go in the red, down, down the lead, into the meter, through the meter, back out the black. Okay, we need to know that that circuit's intact. The quickest and sa safest way to check that is if we get our test light, a test light or a bulb, anything at all. Okay, the, the test light is ju just acting as a current limiting device, but it'll put a load on the circuit and allow current to flow. So we're gonna, all we're going to do is put our test light onto the red lead onto there, like that. And we're gonna give it a circuit. We're gonna go back then onto the ground. All right, you can see our test lights lit up. So we've got current flow through the circuit and our meter is reading 0 0.14 amps. Okay, that's 140 milliamps. All right, so we now know the fuse circuit inside our meter is good to go. So our test, we've tested our test equipment and we're quite happy that that there is, is drawing 140 milliamps or 0.14 of an amp. Okay, so we can now disconnect that. We can get rid of our test lamp because we don't need that any longer. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do now, we're going to remove um, whichever's the most easily accessible terminal. Obviously, normally you would remove the earth you, do, you remove the earth first but that's at the back there and we've got separate earths and battery monitoring and all that for the purposes of this demonstration it doesn't really matter okay it's 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 our car it's my car but best practice you're removing the earth when at all when at all possible sometimes that not, that's not possible especially on the Peugeot Citroen vehicles where the negative terminal is buried right at the back of the battery okay so best practice is earth first, but that's not always possible. So all I'm going to do now is get me 10 mil spanner. I'm just going to loosen the battery terminal, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to remove the terminal fully. Because if I do that, there's there's shut down and, and, and start and reboot procedures on a lot of vehicles now. So I don't want to interrupt the flow of current through the battery, through the car and all that. I don't want to be waking up and putting the car to sleep unnecessarily because that gives me extra current drain, extra current draw. I've got to wait for the car to go back to sleep and there's also a danger of spiking a component, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, it doesn't matter which way round I connect these leads now, okay? We're still on the amp range. So we're still on a fused amp range. All I'm going to do is one of the connections is going to go onto the terminal of, of the of the battery clamp okay so the outside of the terminal of the battery clamp you'll notice i'm using the big the big clip so that i can actually just get a nice good big connection on it and then what i'm going to do i'm going to slowly slide that battery terminal up without breaking the circuit yeah and then i'm going to put this clamp onto the battery post itself okay and then i'm going to remove it all right so i've actually kept that circuit it's all in circuit now okay and then what i'm going to do now is just put something over the top to make sure that i don't get any shorts or flashes or anything like that so that's all nice and good now we can see there there's zero amps reading on that now watch what happens if I just open the door, you stay focused on that. So I'm going to wake the vehicle up. All I'm going to do is open the door. You can see the vehicle's woke up, the body systems have woke up. 
the numbers on the meter it's telling me now it's 1.7 amps so that's the initial wake up i've not put the key on or anything like that so imagine for example if we've got um, an interior light staying on or something like that or the dash continually staying woke up that's a typical drain that we'd, we'd expect to see okay for our battery drain really what we want to see with the vehicle asleep and the car locked we want to see less than or equal to 70 milliamps that's 0 0.07 of an amp all right ideally less than or equal to 50 milliamps but that's not always possible on, on modern vehicles and what we'll see now if you look there so obviously some of the wake it's starting to go to sleep again now because we're not actually doing anything it's dropped down to 0 0.71 of an amps okay that is still 700 milliamps if we was to put that on the milliamp scale that would be 700 milliamps so it's seeing it's dropping now in stages So the next question is, is which, which meter do we need to use? We've, we've already verified that the, the blue meter, the OW18B, this is available on my Amazon store. We've already verified that it's measuring uh, the correctish voltage. Okay. We've tested its current, the, the current measuring ability using the, um, using the incandescent test lamp which I know for a fact this draws between 150 and 170 milliamps depending on temperature and bulb temperature and stuff like that so we've verified that the the, the, the meters are accurate enough to measure mil, you know milliamps we've shown there we've got a circuit you can see now it's dropped down to 390 milliamps or 0.39 of an amp and what will what will happen is over a period of time now that will just drop and drop and drop and drop and drop Till it gets to zero again till the vehicle is fully fully asleep and it's not really a measurable scale because don't forget we're on an amp scale here yeah when what, what we're actually measuring are thousands of an amps that's the that's the tolerance we want to get to okay the reason i did it on an amp scale rather than the milliamp scale which is next to it is because I knew I'd be opening the door to wake the vehicle up and what I didn't want to do is start blowing start blowing fuses on the meter and stuff like that. So, hope you found that really interesting. Obviously, refitting is the reverse of what you've done here. Put your connections back safely on there first before you remove your lead so that you don't break the circuit and you're not introducing voltage spikes or current spikes. And then the very last thing, once you've disconnected your meter leads, Make sure you take that lead out of the amp, put it back in the voltage and turn your meter off. Then the next time you come to measure voltage, your leads are in the correct slots. So what meter do we need to use? Do we need to use a snap-on or the same sort of ilk? So 200, 220 quid meter. We've got the Fleur there. I think I'm not sure that's that's got the inbuilt thermal imager. Um, between 300 and 500 pounds maybe a little bit more depending on the model you get we've got the 40 quid uh, 01 meter with built-in bluetooth functionality so this will actually um bluetooth to my phone so if i'm driving along i can, I can have that in the car and then the bluetooth on the phone that, that i'm recording this on now nice big scale and i can data log or one of the many other meters that are available so we've got you know various different snap-on ones we've got the hobby tool scope there and all that the answer is use the right tool for the right job to test the right thing at the right time technical topics for right use your meter test your meter test your test equipment before you do the testing and be sure of what you're testing for thanks for watching you're awesome available on my Amazon store.